This is the birthplace of George Washington Carver. Uh, he was born, we believe, in the late 1860s or mid-1860s. Um, as a slave, he didn't really have any records that we know of, uh, so that's why we don't know his birth date. Toward the end of the Civil War, he and his mother were kidnapped by bushwhackers who would often come to the area looking for money or anything they could sell to get money. Fortunately for the owner of George, his name was Moses Carver, uh, he knew a neighbor who was a Union Scout. So the Union Scout went down after the bushwhackers to try and find Mary and George. Now unfortunately for Mary, she was never found. We have no idea what happened to her, where she went to. She may have died, she may have been killed, or she may have been sold further south. Fortunately for us though, George was found. He was brought back here to the Moses Carver farm. He was originally given at least 12 months to live because of uh, a horrible case of whooping cough. So he stayed here for about 10 to 12 years of his life before he went on on his educational journey, starting off in Neosho, then moving on to Fort Scott. He uh, applied to Highland College, but was unfortunately rejected because of his skin color. He homesteaded out west for a bit in uh, Ness County, Kansas, and then he went to Iowa for his education to go to college. He got his master's in agriculture from what is now Iowa State, and from there he went down to Tuskegee Institute at the request of Booker T. Washington. In one town, there were two George Carvers in town, and uh, their mail kept getting mixed up. And so George initially added the W uh, to help distinguish that, but as luck would have it, the other George Carver's middle name was also W. So at the um, suggestion of a friend, he decided to uh, make his middle initial stand for Washington after our first president. Here at the National Monument site is his, what you think is his birthplace, the remnants of a foundation. Mm -hmm. And then the, the owner, the slave owner's original home is still here. Yep, and actually uh, the slave owner's home, which you can see on this map here, mm -hmm. um, is the 1881 Moses Carver House. Uh, the original two cabins would have been about 12 by 12, fairly small cabins, and you'll actually see the uh, footprint of that on the trail. So despite how famous Carver is now, we have to understand that he also faced some of the same trouble in the Jim Crow era as many of his other fellow African Americans did. Uh, one incident that came up when he was uh, still at Tuskegee, he was going on a, essentially a road trip, uh, taking a train out, and he happened to be riding with a famous white female photographer. And naturally, uh, a lot of the people were not too excited about that, and the people he met at the train stops were not exactly adoring fans. Mm. As a matter of fact, Carver can be quoted as saying that there was real concern as to whether or not he would make it back to Tuskegee alive. In another incident, he was actually giving testimony before Congress in regards to a peanut tariff. And uh, one congressman happened to make the comment, uh, would you like some watermelon with that, which at that time could have been considered a racist uh, slur. Well, it's still today. It is today, even. Yeah. Uh, I don't hear it as often, but he did get that slur while he was giving a testimony. Uh, but Carver was able to handle it. Um, off the top of my head, what he responded was, uh, if you want dessert, that would go very nicely but we know we can all go without dessert. The recent war has taught us that. This was after World War I with the food rationing and all of that, so he was able to use his charming demeanor uh, to defuse that situation. He was originally given five minutes to speak on uh, the peanut tariff. And who wouldn't? It's a tax issue. Who's going to want to listen to taxes for an hour or two? Well, by the end of that session, he had been given unlimited time to speak. So he was very influential, he was very charming, he was, it was very easy for him to get along with people and to talk about issues that normally we wouldn't even consider today. George Washington Carver, the man whose mother was sold for $700 to a slave owner when she was 13. The man who became famous for his great wisdom, but mostly for turning peanuts into products like ink, paper, soap, dyes, milk, cosmetics, and other things we use every day. If you're close to Joplin, Missouri, stop in. You won't be sorry.